Right, it is 11 o'clock on the clock, so we'll make a start. Uh, I have to start by reading out this statement. I am obliged to inform you that this meeting is being videoed. Members of the public are entitled to record the proceedings uh, and are requested to give prior notice so that any additional measures that may assist can be put into place. Any member of the public who has any concerns should raise them now. Right, so we we'll move on. Item one, apologies for absence. I know we've got apologies for Joyce Barrow, but I think that's not clear. Uh, item two, disposal of pecuniary interests. Uh, item number 13, reader, and I shall take no part of the vote of the Okay. Uh, any others? Right. Item three, minutes. They have been, I've seen them and they look okay to me. I've got me a summary. Uh, everyone happy with the minutes? Yeah, don't say anything. Right, can I see everybody indicate that they're happy? Right, thank you very much. Item four, public question time. Now there are some public questions. Um, and the first one was from uh, Mr. Malloy. Um, and that's uh, a resubmitted from the Cabinet meeting of the 28th of November in Square Marble House. Um, Mr. Malloy's not here, is he? No. no. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the response is, to questions one and two. We are currently investigating the two questions raised and will respond in due course. And to question three, the registered title is available at the land registry. <coughs> the council bought out the leasehold interest in the property. The plan is available from land registry on request. So that response that Yeah, well, but they, yeah, have they got the response as well? Yeah. yeah well, <coughs> So then the next one is a question from Paul Carter about London. And where's Rob? Are you going to deal with this one, Rob? Yeah. OK. Uh, and Mr. Paul Carter's not here? No. Right. OK. OK. Um, I don't know whether you want me to go through these and the written reply. I don't know if you want me to go through that. Well, I, 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 as it's a written response, it's quite detailed. Yeah. Uh, not you, really. But just in that case, I'll just pray see it. And, and in terms of the response, um, Mr. Cameron was questioning the fact that London is now uh, regarded as a, identified as a hub within the local plan. Um, this was part of what Cabinet had seen previously about the hierarchy of settlements that we consulted on and, and so on. And as part of that, there was a discussion about could we make sure the scoring is correct for the different services and things like that. As you'll see from the answer, that's as part of that exercise, that's resulted in London going in as a, as a community hub in terms of status and the local <coughs> review. But, um, yes, but that's, that's all contained within the written answer to Okay, right, should we move on? Uh, item five, member questions? No, <coughs> no member questions. Item six, scrutiny items, welfare reform, task and finish with the final report. Claire Wilde? Thank you, Leader. Um, I'm sure you've all read the report. I'd just like to say a few things. Um, the one is uh, Landau. Uh, they came and gave us a presentation one morning. It was actually originally set up by Shropshire Council. It's the most successful by far, and the only usually work now with Hereford. Um, they produced some astonishing results, and um, I think it's 60 or 70 percent of the people who actually go to them to help actually get jobs. So I, I know I spoke to Clive Wright at the time and asked if they could do a presentation to, uh, to Cabinet. You'll, you'll, see, you'll see my report, and um, I think that there is room for much better partnership working between all the organisations, which hopefully that's something that um, I think it comes under Lee that Lee will pick up on. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Right. It's just I've seen the recommendations, which were all straightforward. Here we are on page 17 of my uh, paper copy. Um, so the recommendations are that we, we do go and work towards a single process. So they possibly, uh, I mean, I didn't know whether you wanted to comment on this or not. I, I wasn't actually sure going forward where it would sit because I did have this conversation with, with the chief executive the other day because I did say. I don't see any problem with, with the recommendations. And the question was, who's actually going to go about producing the report to, to show how we go forward? 
Sure. And yeah. so you know I'm going to ask you that question. <laughs> okay. I was hoping to be a very straightforward answer, and as often happens, there isn't quite. Uh, and it could sit between two parts of the council departments at the moment, <coughs> in either the welfare, welfare reform, reform team or in revs and benefits. So we've got that to work through, and rather than give a full answer today, uh, not least of all because we've got new opportunities with the digital platforms we have put in, how all of this might operate particularly, and it's a further decision to be made, whether we uh, move towards a single front door so everybody coming into the council comes in in one place and then we can track uh, how those inquiries or referrals are dealt with. So we need to do some more work on this uh, and I think where we are is that we'll bring the report back uh, to Cabinet in the new year, having worked with all the relevant portfolio holders to decide what's the best way of going about it. Right. Alan was first, then Roger. Well, Claire asked uh, for questions and said she won't answer them. And the obvious thing that comes out of uh, this report is that it represents a massive condemnation of this and the previous government's policy regarding uh, welfare. And I just asked if she agreed with that. And uh, there's some substance on why I say that. If you look at the um, paragraphs on universal credit, we see that this massive, um, largely discredited system uh, hits the poor hardest, it attacks those who are less able to defend themselves, and it's um, dismal, uh, it shows dismal regard for those most in need, and I think the, uh, the government and the Conservatives here and elsewhere should be very ashamed of what it says. Clearly, policy is crippling on individuals, families, and communities, and universal credit has been shown to make that situation worse. And it's designed to make it worse because it's part of the government's austerity measures. Um, if you look at the statistics, look at the document and the statistics, on, on page six, you will find that the actual imposition of universal credit, uh, as it rolls out across structure, is likely to uh, cost the um, people and the economy £102 million pounds each year. Reading, reading on from that um, area, uh, it shows that amounting, this amounts to £550 pounds for each working age adult. Um, and it goes on to say that households in social rented accommodation have been particularly hard hit. It shows that at least half of the loss will fall on in-work households and households of residents who are disabled or incapacitated make up th only 3% of all households. However, this group has absorbed 14% of the loss from these reforms. Absolutely <coughs> appalling uh, statistics from uh, uh, legitimate calculations um, for, for the structure. I'd also advise um, members and, uh, and, and the public to look carefully at the appendix that is produced, um, which shows how people are being hit, the extent that they're being hit, the numbers involved, and the financial implications for them, and of course, the disruption economy. At the very least, I think that this task and finish um, committee should be running on and looking at what is the actual situation and who are, are being hit by universal credit in, in structure now that it's uh, been rolled out and actually in place. So I hope the, uh, I hope the chair um, <coughs> of, of the task and finish and the scrutiny will agree that that should be the case and that this is an ongoing thing and it really will start to look uh, dispassionately, that is non-politically, at what is going <coughs> on and what this government is doing and urge us all to lobby and to agitate for change and abandonment of Can you use the word to agitate? Policy. I don't like the word agitate. Uh, and lobby. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, you ruined my closing remark, but nevertheless, <laughs> I, think you, I think you've got the gist of what I'm trying to say. I think we understand. But hidden saying. within this we don't document, agree with everything hidden saying. within this document is a devastating indictment of what this government and what 
Conservatives were around the piece, have, have gone in terms of damaging further the lives of, 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 of the firm. And we know that... Um, Can't they, they, they sorry, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll close there, but I hope that Claire will at least agree that the task of finishes, finish committee uh, group continues its work uh, specifically looking at the impact of the rollout of the university credit on residents and so on. Roger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, echo many of those remarks and how <coughs> universal credit is being rolled out and it's hitting the ones who are most deserving of it. But if one goes to page 15 of the report, it says there that this Shropshire Council has been instrumental in taking £1.1 million pound of uh, those out of work, receiving unemployment benefit, everything like this, due to the policy that was adopted for it. It's in the Localising Council Tax Support. Last paragraph, Shropshire Council estimates that this, this change to Council Tax Support will result in net savings to the Council of 1.1 million. In other words, Shropshire Council is collecting 1.1 million, 20% Council tax from those who can least afford it. But I'd also like to draw attention to the discretionary housing payment, which is in the following paragraph. Again, I think that's a scandal, quite honestly. It's even more of a scandal than the government introducing universal credit. This council, in the 12 months finishing last March, had £539,000 of the government to give out as a grant for those who had difficulty meeting their rent, uh, things like this discretionary housing payments. In the last we only used 44% of it. We gave back to government, as not needed, 56% of it, nearly £300,000. We said, thank you, government, we don't need it in Shropshire. We're, we're, we're only using that. Over the last four years, Shropshire Council has given back to the government £716,000 that they had from government discretionary housing payments because it was needed. <coughs> Uh, 50 councils in this in England and Wales even top up their grants because it isn't enough because they feel that they need to assist their residents. Shropshire Council is the fifth largest underspend of this grant in England and Wales, and maybe it is because of the uh, uh, the way it's, it's done. Because there is a reference on page 16 about the understanding why the council has not awarded more of its allocation and there's two different departments, two <coughs> different directorates involved in allocating this grant and it says there the last sentence of that second paragraph on that page, this split responsibility appears to have weakened any coordination in ensuring that allocated funding was used in its entirety. We have people, we have residents out there more people using food banks than ever before trying to feed their children and their families. We've got money here, discretionary housing payments, and we're saying to the government, sorry, we don't need any disruption. Other authorities are using more than what they originally granted. Thank you, Chairman. Right. And I do pop with you. Yeah, I've got the lights on. Yeah, got the lights on. Okay, so. I'm a glass half full kind of girl, and so I'm going to try and give you a more positive message. Chris Westwood, who runs the Welfare Tasking uh, Unit, is extremely proactive. He's got excellent systems in place. We've been reassured that this money will now go out. So moving forward, what I would like to do is actually, as Alan suggested, carry this forward. However, before we take it forward to have a look at the next stage, I think that some of the people that we work with have to start working together themselves because it, it is all a bit sort of all over the place. Now, we're here to, to help the people of Shropshire, and I think we could come out with a very positive message, but in order to get that positive message out, we have to ensure that all the different parts are working more closely together uh, and so I'd be happy to take it forward but I need help from Cabinet to work with, with the people who are delivering this, to work with all the different partnerships 
and actually come up with a with a plan. But as I say, I'm really impressed with Chris Westwood's team, and I'm sure we won't be sending much money back in the future. Yes, and I would echo those comments, and that really is why I did say to the chief executive the other day, "Who's going to do this?" And we need to pull it together. We accept that it needs pulling together under probably one person being responsible for how it goes forward. And, 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 and that's accepted, but we'll need it. So, are you going to bring a report <coughs> to cabinet? Will it need to come? Or, or well, we'll think about that. But we, it will be actioned. We will find a way of, of actually pulling this together. And whether it then needs to go, see, I don't as, ca as cabinet. We can't say to you, you must do a task and finish group. Yeah. We, you know, we will leave you to make that decision. But I think as cabinet, we do need to probably report back so that everybody understands how we're going to take these recommendations forward. So I think it probably should be another cabinet report just to clarify exactly how we intend to do this. I mean, now, at this point in time, I would imagine it comes, I think it will come back to cabinet, not anywhere else. The only other place it could go is to council. I don't think that will be the case. But when we've done the work and we've got the report, we can make that decision. Uh, and I think that the issues that have been raised, single point of coordination, where this all sits and getting the money spent. That, that's the essence of this. We can sort that out in the report and I'm imagining we'll be back uh, early in the new year, certainly yeah. before the end of the financial year, but probably much sooner than that. Okay. Yeah, well, that might deal with um, getting rid of 330,000 or whatever. It's shortfall on our spending on that. But I do hope that the committee, as I suggested, takes a long, hard look and describes the implications of the rollout of universal credit alongside the work on this in internal thing. Um, we're talking about 102, potentially 102 million pounds being taken from people's, uh, from people's household expenditure. Uh, and these are the hardest hit already by poverty in this country, which is despicable. Um, so please send that task and finish group, which is not a welfare benefit, look at that as a major part of its work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should also be clear that what George Council has been doing and working with partners is ensuring that we meet people's needs, not necessarily through the grant. And part of the concern in policy terms uh, has been that if you get people to be reliant uh, on grants that may disappear, then that doesn't necessarily put them in a good place. So it's about meeting their needs, not necessarily through this grant. Uh, but if policy changes towards how do we spend the grant, then we can certainly uh, come back, as I said earlier, to Cabinet and think about how we can do that. But that's, that's mm -hmm. And I accept what the Mayor was saying earlier, and I'm sure she's going to re echo it. Part of this is about getting people back into work and getting them into employment. Yeah, and, and also, we could, you know, we could have another 10 meetings to, to discuss how hard hit those unfortunate people are. However, that's not going to help them. What we've got to do is actually find ways of making this work better, and we should focus on the more positive aspects of this <coughs> and have some positive outcomes. Right, so the, there are recommendations on page 17. Um, so can we sort of just put a, a final rider and let the Chief Executive <coughs> report back to Cabinet in the new year on, on how this will be implemented? Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. Okay, have you any papers on the seat? Right, thank you very much. So, now, financial strategy, item seven, Councillor David Minery. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, I, I will be brief. I think by now everybody understands what this paper is. This is the, the starting point, really, of the budget considerations of the budget forming for the 1920 financial year. There are some recommendations, however, within this report, which appear on page 24, um, and the recommendation is that members approve the savings proposals, which will deliver a balanced budget as outlined in Appendix 4, which for ease of reference is pages 34 and 41 in the document before you today, which will enable the leader to take his proposed budget to consultation and then on to Council on the 28th of February 2018. Um, I'm happy to move that. Okay, I'm happy to second it. Roger. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I hope the brevity of the report and 
just a just a few pages summing up where this council is going to spend its money, how it's going to raise it for next year. I also note that the cabinet seems to <coughs> preempt a council decision tomorrow. The council decision tomorrow will be looking at public health and other reductions, cuts, which are proposed for both this year and next year, and has yet to make a decision on it. But those cuts are incorporated in this report here. So and if council decides to alter any aspect of this for this coming next year, and maybe also for this year, depending on how it's done, it will alter what the financial strategy is. So the report, I know things are happening quickly in London, but maybe 24 hours here can actually change things as well. So I know that. I also note in the report that digital transformation saving for next year, labelled as £9 million, is deleted. I also note that the home to school transport in uh, children's services, which has been in there for the last two or three years, is deleted. And suddenly there's £700,000 in for other forms of transport. There is no detail, and I'm not sure how the public can actually say this is acceptable to make any comments on it, when there's just no detail in it, in what are the cuts, what is being proposed, just block numbers in it, and I assume if and when it goes on the website, there'll be no further details put in even there, so that one can actually go into it to actually decide. You can go through the report. I noticed that there was a million pound uh, in from the CCG, which is said in the, in the report, 500 and 570,000 uh, won't be attainable, so we've taken it down to 430,000. But in the report, it's then as a red saving for next year. So, are the CCG this time going to come up with this money or not? It's, uh, it's appeared in many reports to this council. I've asked a number of questions at this cabinet, <coughs> and the last time I asked the question, I was assured that round table discussions were in progress and it looked optimistic that all the money that Shropshire Council argued it was owed was going to be paid to Shropshire Council. Obviously, it's not. We're doing our best to retrieve as much as is possible. Uh, <coughs> Barsley? Thanks, Peter. And just specifically on the transport savings, we have scheduled a report to come to Cabinet in January with all the details. <laughs> But sorry, I'll just say we, we've got a report scheduled to come to Cabinet in January and that will have all the detail in it. Right. Lee. Um, sorry, sorry, Lee, I need to just correct a point of accuracy. Um, uh, Roger's um, assertions around the um, CCG funding um, is not related to legacy debt for um, continuing health care payments. Um, no, we're pleased to report. No, I'm pleased to report that. Um, uh, their, their bill has been paid and that um, there is there's no debt outstanding um, in relation to um, continuing health care payments. The reference um, in this uh, strategy here refers to ongoing work um, around joint commissioning arrangements with the commissioning group um, and we anticipate and we're continuing to work towards um, savings that we would deliver as a local authority as a result of um, jointly commissioning um, uh, support and care uh, alongside the CCG and it's those conversations and discussions and arrangements that um, we're anticipating will deliver that saving. Okay. Uh, Roger first. Yeah, only, only a quick one, Chairman. I also know whether any more details are available or not, but there's 1.5 <coughs> million going to be saved in the waste recycling contract. Uh, again, no details. Is a report coming? When will that be uh, operated? Because again, public are being consulted. Do they agree with 1.5 million being taken out of the waste and recycling contract? But that's why we go to consult, so they can tell us whether they agree or not. But what does it involve? Does it involve charging for the green bin or not? As many seem to assume, because that's the uh, information that is being fed out in from some quarters. Right. Alan. Uh, well, we're going to be discussing this tomorrow, and I don't want to really have that one. And, 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 
Brown comes up, we'll be discussing it yet, yet again. But I am more concerned about the financial state of the council, um, given the policies of, uh, of the government than, than ever before. And, uh, it's, uh, it seems to me that there is a potentially catastrophic scenario at the background of this report that we are running out of the capacity to deal with the current financial climate that is, uh, that is handing down. Many areas of the council seem to this peril the beginning of an end um, of that uh, of that area of work. And um, it seems to me that everything depends upon scenes. A uh, massive gamble uh, on the government's policy to the fairer funding um, force. And I see it in the corporate in the corporate um, strategy tomorrow the dashboard says just that, that we are dependent <coughs> upon the government uh, putting back uh, a lot, great, large amounts of money into the government and the public sector for, for survival. Uh, that's notwithstanding the fact that the peer group that we looked at very closely to us um, not so long ago said don't rely on um, federal funding. It may not and is likely not to happen. And notwithstanding that, the government is showing no awareness of the problems facing people and um, local government and, and, and services. The question is, what if federal funding does not happen? How sustainable is this council on the current uh, funding regime for the future? Right. Okay. Does anybody else want to, before I start? No? That's all right. I, I don't mind. I'll say probably what you're thinking, David. Um, this council's, uh, like all shire counties, is pushed by government. In, in, you know, they're not as generous to us as they might be. But our funding is pretty secure this year and next year. We're, we're satisfied we can uh, have a balanced budget for next year. Uh, and that is that is set in tablets of stone and will be at, at the budget meetings as the, that take place next year. The problem after that is we did a four-year deal as a council with the government and, we're, and next year will be the final year of that four-year deal. And nobody's quite sure what happens after that. Now we've taken a very, very conservative approach to, to finance, and we've taken a worst-case scenario on what on, on what lots of these things. We know more or less what we think we'll get in terms of uh, revenue and, and the the normal day-to-day -day money. What we're not sure of, sure of is the one-off grants that this council gets for various things like housing, etc., and, and adult social services, and that's what's not clear after next year. Now we're hoping that in the next few months that will become clear. I mean, we haven't even had our settlement figures or even indicative figures yet for next year. Um, and we're, again, we're working on a very conservative uh, line. We expect, we hope, to get more money than, than is predicted in these papers. Uh, and we hope to be even better off than the, the, the papers say. But a lot of it does depend on the, the spending review that government is likely to take place. And there's two aspects of that. The government will do a spending review uh, for the year after next year, which will mean how much money goes to local government compared with, say, the health or defence budgets or the other big budgets. But once it's decided how much money goes to local government, it's also then a question of what local government, how that money is shared out. Do we get more as against the metropolitan councils and the district councils, and how is it shared out? Now, the, the CCN, which represents um, councils like ours are fighting hard to make sure that our share of that cake goes up because there are pressures on adult social services which everybody acknowledges and we are hit harder than many because of the aging population in Shropshire and that's where we're fighting and that will make all the difference to what happens after next year but whatever happens we do expect to get some of these one-off budget items that, that have, we've not counted on yet and we do expect to, to look you know, I'm hopeful that we will look even better than we do at the moment. But next year is secure. There is absolutely no problem for this council next year. And I don't believe in the years after. But you're right. It is like looking into a crystal ball because they <coughs> haven't announced all the money for the year after next. So and I think James would be happier if he knew more about next year. But I won't ask him to comment on that. But um, we're, we're pretty confident that next year's budget stacks up perfectly well and we'll go forward. And you're right, after that, 
it, it is a little bit difficult because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. We don't know what's, let's face it, and I hate to mention the word Brexit, but nobody knows what's going to happen with Brexit yet, do they? And, and what the effect of that will be on, on spending in this country. So there's lots of uh, question marks. But this is talking about next year's financial strategy, and we're pretty confident about next year's financial strategy. Can I see all those in favour of the recommendations? Can I just add something, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lena, before you, before you take the vote? Um, I, I really just want to address this, this, this point a little bit further. The, the, there are two options that we have when we're setting and when we're looking forward uh, into the future with budgets. Uh, as the leader said, 1920, we're absolutely content that the budget that's set out will be a legal budget and we will achieve it. Uh, going forward beyond that, nobody knows. Now, there are councils that are assuming that the various levels of grants that they're currently getting for the various things will continue. And they're preparing their forward projections on that basis. We, we've taken the view that that's not safe because that leads us into a false sense of security, that we feel it's much better just to deal with the reality that things that we know are going to come in. Hence, you've got on page uh, take the last of 33 um, the funding gap. If nothing changes, if there is no more grants, if everything gets cut off, and you're, you're quite right, it is horrific, and if that was to come to pass, uh, it would be a severe challenge for this, this council. But nobody expects that to come to pass. But just in case, we have to show the position, or we feel that we have to show the position, uh, that we would be in were that to happen. Other councils, as I say, take an alternative view, and I think that's wrong. I think that, that is misleading. Far better to know what problems we may face than suddenly be caught out. Right, there is a recommendation on page 24. Can I see all those in favour, please? Right, thank you very much. We move on to item 8, setting the council tax base and council tax support for 1920. Councillor David Minnery. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, this again is it's the annual document that uh, sets out the basis upon which the budget will actually be prepared when it comes to calculating or estimating what income our council tax will be in the forthcoming year. Uh, and this paper deals with the, uh, the various rules and the options. Uh, there are a series of recommendations. I'm not going to read them all out because they run to uh, round from 2.1 to 212, but they're on pages 43 and 44. Uh, most of them are very technical ones, but I, I formally do. And I'm happy to second. I do read this every year, and I think my understanding gets a little bit better each year, but I have to say there are parts of this report I do struggle to, to fully digest. But the one part I would say is that 212, we are expecting a collection rate of 98%. We do have a very high collection rate for the council tax in this area. So, yeah. But I'm not sure there's anything to be said other than... Uh, it is what it is. It is, but yeah. Do, do members accept it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Only a quick one, Chairman. Uh, I note an understrung <coughs> one that can't locate it now, but uh, members will around the table know it. It gives the return, the percentage return we have on the average £118 million pounds that we have in the bank. How much is that in cash terms, please? The it's percentage is there, but not the 0.7 something percent. Well, I know, was it 6 or oh, Oh, the, oh the, yeah, there's another paper in the minute. Is it? Okay, is it, is it in that? That's why I couldn't find it in this. Treasury one. management update, there are some figures there of, of um, how we're managing our money. That's probably where you'll find those okay, figures. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. right, so in terms of this report, there are a series of recommendations. Can I see all those in favour, please? <coughs> right, thank you very much. Right, moving on. Item 9, Councillor David Minnery again, Treasury okay. Management Update, Board 2, 1819. Yes, thank you, Mia. Um, I, ought, I ought to plan my social life a little bit different and not the 10 football matches the night before a cabinet meeting. Probably one. Apparently, yes, apologies for the gruff voice this one. Um, so, the, this is item 9, the Treasury Management Update. So this is the one that refers to the return uh, that Councillor Evans just mentioned of 0.78%. Um, which um, outperforms the benchmark of 0.27%. This is a very similar report in some ways to the one that we 
had before us at the previous meeting, except that this one, uh, that was the monitoring report, and this is the report on the overall strategy. Because the, the only recommendation is to uh, members are asked to accept the position as set out in the report, and the report is supported by some comprehensive um, reports on uh, in very small print. All apologies for that. In order to get it on a single sheet of paper, it needs to be shrunk, um, which provides all the background information. Uh, I can't promise to answer any, every question, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure James will come to my support if need be. Right. I've only moved. And I'll second. I'll repeat the question. It's in 8.3 on page 81. Investment return was 0.78%. What does that mean in cash terms over these six months? It's uh, of the 100 and 18 million. It's got the additional income that's over and above what was in the budget already. So that's the improvement. Congratulations to the finance team to do. But what what is the total at the end of quarter two? Please. Double that. Oh, the yeah. If you can send it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought he'd have known it just like. Right, okay. Uh, so that information will be sent to you, Roger. Yeah. Okay, any other comments on the report? No. Right, so all those in favour, please show. Right, thank you. Item 10. Addressing unmet housing need, outline business case to establish a wholly owned global housing company. Councillor Rob Macy. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, in terms of this report, obviously at the last cabinet in November, or cabinet in November, um, cabinet approved going forward to develop an outline business case uh, to meet the housing need, which option the role that we as a council can play. Um, we were asked to prepare an outline business case. So the report in front of you today um, shows the work that's been done on that outline business case and asks for recommendations in terms of taking that forward. Obviously this is on the council agenda for tomorrow and I, I'm probably expecting that's where the bulk of the debate will be. Um, it will be a council decision to take that forward. But what I will say is the work that's been done so far, the outline business case has been done in accordance with the HM Treasury Green Book 5 case model. So it reviews the strategic, economic, commercial, financial and management case for the model. Um, and the final business case will obviously pick up the more detailed issues, including <coughs> borrowing costs, startup capital, organisational capacity, etc. Um, what I would just like to add at this stage, um, <coughs> the tomorrow, is the fact that we've already had um, some member briefings, we've already been to um, the scrutiny committee following cabinet last time, and we're also looking at um, the performance management scrutiny committee Rapid Action Task and Finish Group for some pre-decision scrutiny, uh, which is planned, which will inform the final report. Uh, so at this stage, it's the recommendations in stage part two of the report. Okay. Yeah, no, this is yeah. this will be recommended to yes. council tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, and I'll second it so it's into action. Right, Roger. Thank you, Chairman. Generally supportive, and I note cross. Uh, support, cross-party support, generally supportive, but I've got three questions that maybe it can be covered in the presentation tomorrow. In the, in, on, they're all on page 101. In 3.6, uh, objectives are in line with the council's corporate strategy, commercial strategy, and yet to be approved housing strategy. Go down to 3.8, will include delivering housing to support and empower independence, for example, younger and older, disabled people, wheelchair users, etc. Then go to 312, and that's the question there, is the company provides a good income stream and enables major savings to be made to Shropshire Council and other public sector budgets. The point I'm trying to make is that I would hope that it's the right house, in the right place, i.e. the size that developers are not building that we would build to provide the houses that uh, our local population are desperately in need of and are not being supplied. So the, the ones above it say the right word, but that one down there provides a good income stream, yep, okay, but we need the right house in the right place. 
for our local residents to actually uh, occupy. And that's exactly the whole point of doing it. If that could be reassured, they're included in it tomorrow, maybe. I'm giving the short assurance now that yes, that's that's the whole point of this. Obviously, the last paper was very much talking about what the identified housing needs are that we're going to work with communities on this. But certainly, those three points I don't I see as working in tandem um, in terms of taking this forward. So, but yes, I'm sure there'll be more tomorrow. Okay. Any other comments? No. Right. All those in favour of the report, please show. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Item 11, designation of Norton in Hales, Adderley and Norton Say parishes as neighbourhood plan area. Again, it's Rob Macy again. Okay, um, this is another of the reports. We've had a few of these previously to council. This is the stage that um, parish councils, councils have to go through to be considered. We, we're not making that, that judgment at this point. Um, but we're looking at the recommendations are cabinet agrees the proposed neighbourhood area identified on the map of appendix two covering the three parish council areas of Adley, Morton, Saint, Morton, Hales, minus the old area already covered by the market trade neighbourhood area, which we've seen through previously, as an appropriate basis for the development of a neighbourhood plan and notifies Adley Parish Council accordingly. And but recommendation two is cabinet agrees that if the proposed neighbourhood area is approved, Three parish councils will be able to prepare a neighbourhood plan for that area, which will be subject to public consultation, examination, and local referendum as set out in the neighbourhood planning regulations. Assuming any subsequent local referendum is successful, Shropshire Council's full council will then be asked to adopt the final version into the neighbourhood plan. So it's just making clear we don't make that judgment at this stage, we're just saying that is a suitable area to go forward for them to prepare. Any comment? I think it's pretty straightforward. All those in favour, please show. Right, that's clear. Everything passed. Uh, item 12, European Social Fund Community Plans. <coughs> Steve Charmley. Thank you, Leader. I get all the catch <coughs> Yes. Um, yeah, th this paper brings forward um, recommendations which uh, enable the um, delivery of £1.7 million of funding um, across Shropshire and Telford. The recommendations uh, set out before you um, uh, suggesting that Shropshire Council becomes the, the accountable body for the fund. Uh, the fund is basically a grant scheme which uh, enables uh, those um, harder to reach people to, to get them back into employment. And I think we touched on the demographic in an earlier paper and that this funding is very much supportive of, of people who are struggling to get back into work for various social social, uh, social problems which uh, surround them, which are listed in the paper further down. Um, included in the, in the scheme is a 0.6 of a full-time employee and two part-time employees, uh, one in Shropshire, one in Telford. So uh, with that, I, I move and uh, we'll get support. Right. I'll second. Um, any comments? It's pretty straightforward. It's all good news for the, for the whole of Shropshire and Telford. Yeah, right, all those in favour, please show. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, choose the shopping centre's next phase. Steve, do you want to start on this one? Shandy, <coughs> uh, in Yeah, thank you, Vida. Um, following on from the <coughs> um, the positive reception of the, the big town plan. Um, this paper takes us forward to the, uh, the future of the, especially the, the shopping town, uh, shop, sorry, shopping centre areas and the, the next phases. Um, in a nutshell, um, there is a tripartite um, funding agreement between the town council, the bid and, and ourselves to uh, fund positions to um, enable the work of the, or the, enable the master planning of, as part of that big town plan to take this forward to the next phase. Um, so the, it's basically £150,000 um, in over three years for, from each of those those parties, um, plus some, some other funding to make, this, make the numbers work. It will fund um, 
uh, a number of positions to um, develop the work as on that uh, come out of the big town plan and bring that to reality. There's obviously a, a lot of um, loose threads and strands which need pull, pulling together as part of that work. <coughs> and uh, this this paper will give us the decision making process to to basically unlock that that funding and bring it together. So with that, I, I'm I'll second it. Just so we're clear, we're talking about two positions. One which would be directly um, work directly for this council on the redevelopment of the Riverside, and the other position is to take the big town plan forward, which is a tripartite position. And it's suggested that we should be the employer of that person, but seconded to the, the other two uh, partners in, in the bid as required. Right, Alan. The heading of, um, of this item is for the shopping centre, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Just to clarify. Yeah. Through the shopping centre to the next phase. Um, but most of what Mr. Chalmers said was about the Big Town Plan. Can we make it quite clear that the Big Town Plan <coughs> is a whole Shrewsbury plan, not just a town centre or a shopping centre or a commercial opportunities plan, it is a plan which relates to, to well-being, to travel, to transport, to uh, communities across the whole of the, of the Shrewsbury area. In actual fact, this, um, this document says more about the Big Town Plan than it was about the Shrewsbury Census, which is a bit disappointing. We'll retitle it next time. I, 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 I thought there, should, there, there, there might have been more <coughs> forthcoming um, ideas about what is happening to the, to the, uh, the shopping <coughs> centres. But, uh, a couple of points. I mean, I have great doubts about the wisdom of us investing in, in, in these in the current climate. Um, that those doubts are compounded by a SIPFA report that I, I can I must say I don't spend a great deal of my time reading SIPFA reports. Um, but uh, there was one published in, in October, it might have been superseded, where they were expect, expressing significant concerns about the extent to which uh, local authorities are borrowing money, taking out PW, whatever, loans, and, uh, and, and investing in the risky business of shopping centres and other commercial activities. And they point out in this article that they're about to issue some stern warnings and some new policy guidelines on that. I don't know if those but That's looking backward, Alan. We're talking here about looking forwards and well, how we go forward. Yeah, well, OK. Well, I'm expressing my, 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 my concerns about it, and I hope it never comes yeah. down to, I told you so, because there's, there's, there's money that's, uh, in the future that's at risk of, um, of, um, uh, of structured residence. But it does point out that it is, um, it, it's a difficult uh, solution where you've got very <coughs> risky business supporting caring services in the longer term and that the council should not become reliant on so-called commercial interests. But having said that, I hope that you do look at the uh, SIPFA report and that at some stage when it does come out, we get uh, a report here that, it, uh, that reassures everyone that we are within the guidelines that they're going to express in, in, that, uh, in that documentation. Um, I'm just looking at whether there is anything about the future of the shopping centres. It talks about destination leisure facilities uh, within those within the area. Um, I just wonder what people are, are looking at. There has been a suggestion that a, a minimised shy hall might go down there. There's also been suggestions that a swimming bath might go down there. And incidentally, I thought we were expecting a report on the future of the swimming bath to this meeting. Has that been? Delayed for some it'll, reason. It'll be around soon. Um, uh, so, what what actually are we thinking about in terms of destination leisure? Is this a, a, a new uh, all thing, the all dancing cinema, or, or, or what is the thinking going on here? I think it would be wrong to discuss in detail here, but I can assure you we will have workshops going forward in the new year talking about how we go forward with the shopping centres, and there'll be plenty of time for, to, to talk about it uh, because. We aren't nailed to any particular plan at the moment. There are a number of options which we need to explore. Uh, but, but the report is the report. Roger wanted to see. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> when I first saw this, should we shopping centres next phase, I thought, oh, we're going to receive details of bringing the shopping centre back on shore. 
away from Guernsey as per the original promise undertaking <coughs> that was given when we purchased the shopping centres and this registered in Guernsey that it was going to be brought back into England. But I've heard nothing. It's been definite silence since then. And then I look at the recommendations and to pick up a little bit, the recommendations are that 500,000 appropriate resources, strategic development framework and master plan to support the delivery of the Shrewsbury Big Ten plan to include uh, redevelopment of the riverside. So what is, which is being used for which, it doesn't define it, it's the Shrewsbury Big, Big Ten plan which includes Riverside, and also I note that it's using the new homes bonus and also uh, the rural exception grant scheme. So, is that something that hasn't been used in rural areas and now it's being used to redevelop the shopping centre in Shrewsbury? Right, hang on. Willem, I know, wants to talk about the same subject. Yeah. Oh. Um, thank you, Leader, for letting me have, um, speak. Um, I can't talk to you today as the Chair of Place and Overview. Um, now, the major part of our work programme at the moment is place shaping, and we have been on the journey with the um, Big Tree Big Town Plan um, and the shopping centres. Um, and my recommendation for you today is, we, when we actually purchase the shopping centres, <laughs> <laughs> when we actually purchase the shopping centres, we did publicly say in council that every part of this process would actually go through scrutiny and overview. Now, I don't stand here to be a blockage. I stand here to be a critical friend. On the journey so far, we've had some really good meetings, both here in Shire Hall and in the town centre itself, where other partners um, can come and speak or come and listen to what we're doing, and it gives us an ideal opportunity for good communication um, with the press, etc. There are parts of this paper that I would like to delve in deeper, specifically where the funding is coming from and what is the impact of shifting that funding, for example but also to get under the teeth of what is going on. Because obviously we are a, a county-wide council, and part of my job is to understand the processes and the benefits we're learning from place shaping Shrewsbury, so they can be used in other market towns um, across the county. Now, I don't want to slow the process up. I'm happy to work with officers and have a special meeting if necessary, if it doesn't fall outside our normal work program. But I would recommend to Cabinet that this paper gets thrown to scrutiny, place an overview. Thank you. I have no problem with this going to scrutiny. Mm -hmm. um, and, but as again, as I said earlier, it's not for us to tell scrutiny that they must do things, but I'm more than happy I'm to awesome. suggest that, yeah. that, that it goes in that. Um, but I, I do think the, um, the recommendations are pretty straightforward, and they are something we need to get on with uh, in terms of this. But I'm more than happy for the scrutiny to be playing a role as we go forward. Well, it's more an overview role rather than a scrutiny role, because I think the whole council needs to be involved in how we go forward. And that's what I'm saying. There will be workshops, etc. Once we start, start formulating some ideas, now, there's not much work going on behind the scenes yet. It is just trying to start working out. It's not working out what we're going to do at the moment. It's working out how we're going to do what we're going to do. You know, we're, we're, we're just starting the thought process. So, and I know Mark Barrow's, at, you know, really gets on to get it. He's only been in post a few weeks and all that. You know, he is starting to get his head around this now. But I think you need, we need a little bit of time. But once we get past, certainly the new year and perhaps even the budget process then this will be one of the subjects for next year that we really need to start digging into and working out exactly how we go forward uh, in terms of roger asking about the offshore bit we're taking lots of legal advice at the moment and the legal advice at the moment is is don't rush take your time try to bring it onshore because to make sure you understand all the different implications of not but just so before Alan even jumps in, we do own the shopping centres, they are ours in entirety, and, and the mechanism we're owned by is a, is a property uh, unit trust, but we own them. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Right, and Rob Macy was next. It, it was then just finding to add, certainly from my terms of, of planning and housing development bit, was I just wanted to draw attention to the fact of for paragraph 1.10 on page 172, which is, Producing an SDF will ensure the appropriate quality is demanded in development investment opportunities through an indicative master plan and architectural vision 
ensure that there is a coherent and logical feel to the town centre in order to create an attractive and distinctive experience for users with footfall and flow throughout the town. As Gwilym's already noted, I'm hoping that that is something that has been stressed to us, and if we can get that built in and learn lessons from that, it can be rolled out to to other areas and informing future future work. So I just wanted to back on that point. Alf. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that um, the, the big town plan is products not just of structure council but of the partnership. And um, one of its uh, reasons for why it's been successful and so well received is the amount of <coughs> involvement from stakeholders that <coughs> being in, that's taken place right from the word go. And also the extent of the consultation that's been surrounding it. Um, and it has been, been, been well received. So everyone needs to be mindful that it is a, a different thing than considering, and I, I think if you're going to talk about the, 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 the shopping centres and the big town plan the same report, I think that's misguided really. Okay, it, yeah, well, it yeah, should be, it should be, it should be but they are very much interlinked. It should be like well, the, 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 yeah, the shopping centres are part and parcel of the big town plan and intrinsic to its success. To, 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 but to I'm it. more than happy but it is that the scrutiny of the committee to, to do whatever you like and come back with any reports you like, because the more input on this, the better. I agree with you, it's all about transparency, let yeah. everybody, anywhere, to have their say. Yeah. And then we can't be accused of doing anything that nobody knows about. <coughs> That's fine. <fine>. Mark. <coughs> Thank you, just a quick point if I can. Um, next year there's going to be a lot of work focused on this area, but I want to just kind of frame there's going to be two streams of this. One is obviously the place shaping and the uh, transitioning into a new economy type of work that we do. But the other bit is there'll be a very strong commercial element, and of course with our owners and investment hat on, a number <coughs> of those kind of key decisions as they get to it will have to be exempt items because of the very nature of them as commercial. I just wanted to put that mark there. Oh, uh, yeah, I think we all understand that. But in general, the conversation about how we go forward the about and the sort of mix yeah, yeah. we're likely to have, I think, needs to be an open conversation. But once we start talking to individual companies about various yeah, yeah, legal yeah. documents, yeah, we will have to do some of it uh, behind closed doors. Yeah. And that's the reality. Right, so there are some recommendations um, on page 173. Is everyone happy with those? Can I see all those in favour? I was told I must make sure we remember to get Leslie Picton back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was done. Yeah. Um, so that's that. The next item 14 is exclusion of the public and press. I'm happy to move from the uh, chair. That's seconded. So uh, can we ask the public to uh, leave?